With the killing of protesters and a police officer, Nigerian troops and police have tightened security across the country. It is with grave sense of responsibility that I address you this evening. You will recall that upon several indications by various groups of their intent to commence a nationwide protest on 1st August 2024, we rolled out several warnings based on actionable intelligence at our disposal, indicating that some groups were mobilizing for violent protest, while some groups claiming to be mobilizing for peaceful protest were doing so with violent undertones, refusing to cooperate with the police on measures to be taken to guarantee peaceful protest. On the basis of this intelligence, the police advised that the protest should be shelved at this instant. Where the organizers insisted on going on with the protest, they were advised to stage the protest in confined locations. This will have enabled the police provide adequate protection for the pro protesters and isolate the criminals whose intention was to loot and destroy in the name of a protest. This we were doing in furtherance of our duty to protect lives and property and maintaining law and order. While we affirm the constitutional rights of citizens to assemble and express their views on issues of national importance, we were wary about the dangers posed by agitation instigated by some individuals who have shown tendencies to be disloyal to the government of the day. Despite our suspicions, we showed good faith through professional conduct by providing security at strategic locations, all aimed at ensuring peaceful conduct during the protest as the promoters pledged. Our men deployed nationwide, went out with a clear brief to ensure that no one is unnecessarily harassed or intimidated. In places where there were court orders, we gave instructions for observance of same. Regrettably, events in some major cities today show that what was being instigated was mass uprising and looting, not protest. Those who were in the forefront of promoting the idea of the protest were not around to lead it. Hoodlums have been let loose on innocent Nigerians and their hard-earned businesses and property looted and destroyed. The motive of the rioters was basically two. Loot and destroy both private and government property. The destruction so far has been mind-boggling. There has been destruction in Kano, Borno, Yobe, Kaduna, Gombe, Bauchi, FCT Abuja, Niger, and Jigawa. Police stations have been destroyed. There have been attempts to take over government houses, looting of government infrastructures. Several warehouses and shops so far have been looted and in several instances completely destroyed. In spite of the refusal of the protesters, for instance in FCT to adhere to a court order requesting that protests in Abuja should be at the national stadium, they trooped into the streets and yet the police provided security for them. At no point did we breach their fundamental, fundamental rights even as they breached court orders. In places like FCT, Kaduna, Kano and Gombe, among others, we recorded incidents of unprovoked attacks on our security personnel, where one policeman has been reported murdered and others seriously injured. We alerted earlier that terror elements may take advantage of the protest to infiltrate the crowd of protesters with suicide bombers. However, as the nationwide protests likely enter day two today, Friday, the 2nd of August, Nigerians are bracing up for more conflicts between protesters and security operatives. Though relatively peaceful in the southern part of Nigeria, especially in Lagos, the police and soldiers were placed at strategic points, including the Lekito Gate. In the northern city of Kano, protesters tried to light bonfires outside the governor's office and police responded with tear gas. In Abuja, police fired tear gas to disperse demonstrators with security forces blocking roads, leading to Abuja Eagle Square, one of the planned demonstration sites. 
out to destroy government property, to vandalize people's private properties, and to loot them. It's criminality. If you do that, we'll point you out and you'll be prosecuted. But as for Nigerians to come out and gather and express themselves, express displeasure for bad governance, express displeasure for corruption, express displeasure for looting of our, uh, looting of our national treasury, we must come Probably out not. and express displeasure. Probably they said not. they are looking for the sponsors of the protest. Nobody is sponsoring it. It's a social media awareness. Well, joining us now on this show as we review yesterday's activities is Kingdom Okere, convener, lawyers in defense of democracy and human rights. But good morning, uh, uh, Kingdom. Good morning, Kingdom Okere. Good morning, my very respected. Good morning. Thank you very much. Very respected presenters, and good morning, Nigerians. Thank you very much. But before we start the conversation, I understand our reporter. Obadoye uh, is uh, okay. Obadoye is not ready yet. When he's ready, we'll go to him. But yesterday we had you on this program, and we just showed the video of what you said yesterday. Today is day two. We have all listened to you. You condemned the violence. You supported uh, demonstration against bad governance. But with the benefit of insight, the morning after, mm -hmm. what's your assessment? of what transpired yesterday. Uh, well, thank you so much. Uh, what transpired yesterday, like uh, we did very early in the morning, we called out activists and human rights uh, lawyers to join us at the protest so that all of us will not be silenced in this country from speaking out against impunity, against corruption, against uh, uh, misgovernance and looting of our public treasury. And that we did. By the time we arrived, I arrived at uh, the MK Abiola Stadium where we have been notified that there is a court order confining the protest in Abuja to, at the MK Abiola Stadium. I met my brother, Comrade Deji. Uh, I don't want you. He was already um, uh, discussing with the CP of police and the, uh, the media men were also there. I also, of course, I saw it on our Rice TV and I joined them. And we tried to profile solution. We tried to uh, dissect the uh, so-called court order, which we are appealing this morning. We have already filed a notice of appeal and uh, we have looked at the court order. It's vacuum. It didn't, none of the us who are promoting the protest, peaceful protest, not riot and criminal. We are promoting peaceful protests, particularly as lawyers in defense of democracy who are part of this uh, uh, end governance protest. Ours, we are promoting peaceful protests, not criminality, not destruction of government properties and private properties of your fellow suffering uh, citizens. And uh, when we got there, we dissected the uh, court order, and it's a, uh, an order from a court of com competent jurisdiction, a high court of the FCT, and it ought to be obeyed until set aside, and that is what we have taken steps to do to seek to set it aside. But why we do that, we uh, saw the need to uh, respect court order, and we try to uh, confine our activity at the uh, MK Abiola Stadium. But that we did for almost two hours until the government themselves, it is this government of Ashwajibol Ahmed Tinumbu, the man who himself protected tested severally, and the man who sponsored, sponsored several civil protests in Nigeria since the insertion of democracy and during the military era. Tunubu himself not only protested, sponsored several protests in this country. He is the person now that unleashed mayhem, that unleashed terror on the peaceful protesters. While we were there at the MK Abiola Stadium, we saw buses of more, more than 10 coastal buses that uh, uh, conveyed their talks to MK Abiola Stadium to come and attack the protesters. And unfortunately for them, some of the some of the, the talks they hired, after they have collected 2,000 naira, they joined the protest because they too, they are hungry, because they too, they are buying from the same market, because they too, they are suffering from uh, uh, insecurity and poverty and mystery that this government uh, of APC have unleashed on us. So uh, that was exactly what happened until, until those talks that were imported by the uh, uh, cabals in the Trum administration came. The protest was confided at MQ Abiola Stadium. It remained peaceful. So it was when they brought in their talks that the protesters now felt that they also need to move. Let the, their talks try to stop them from moving. And that was when they now moved peacefully and proceeded to Eagle Square. And the police, uh, for the FCT police commissioner, he was too professional. Um, he tried to calm down 
problem, the same uh, the, the 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 situation, and try to ensure, uh, ensure that we we protested within the ambits of the law while he was emphasizing on the need to uh, obey the court order. So the police and the road safety and other sister security agencies they exhorted the protesters until they went beyond uh, they walked down uh, from finance bridge heading to uh, Independent uh, Avenue to divert to um, Eagle Square to continue our peaceful protest. That was when uh, the police released uh, tear gas on innocent, peaceful, and uh, harmless protesters. Not just tear gas, they, they, changed, they turned the whole environment to a war zone. In fact, you could hardly breathe. People ran head and scatter. Uh, those of them that were smart, those of us that were asthmatic, we tried to uh, keep safe, and uh, uh, two, three people fainted, you know, and but we were later revived because of maybe because of their health condition. So what happened yesterday was a clear uh, 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 demonstration of uh, of lawlessness by this administration of a man who we hold at a very high esteem, a very democrat uh, by nature since. 1999 to today, somebody that has okay. challenged several uh, illegalities in, in, in both the law court and uh, uh, by, by way of uh, a peaceful protest and the uh, expression of, uh, okay. of grievances. Kendall. And uh, that was what we witnessed. The police unleashed mayhem on innocent protesters, amlet protesters, who conducted themselves peacefully from Enkri Abiola Stadium until we got to um, uh, Independent uh, okay. Avenue okay. and trying to buy, by head of service and try to go to Eagle Square. Okay. Okay, Kingdom of Korea, we'll come that back. That was what happened yes, we'll yesterday come, in Abuja. We'll come back to you shortly. But our correspondent is at the uh, Lekito Gate and is ready uh, for us. Uh, Obadeoye, good morning. Was the situation report today, day two, in Lagos, particularly at that, at that uh, spot where you are, Lekito Gate? Yes, Lekito Gate is calm this morning. Remember that some protesters came here yesterday, but they were dispersed uh, by security officers who fire takers at them. So uh, in readiness for a repeat of that this morning, uh, I have a joint um, you know, operation of um, some security operatives here in Lagos. That's talking about the police and the Lagos um, Neighborhood Safety Corps. They are here. And we also have some of their, you know, their vehicles and some of their uh, tools here waiting uh, for um, you know, the protesters, if they will come or not. But up to this moment, there is no sign of any protest here or there is no sign that any protest is going to take place here at the Lekki Togate today. Because um, right now, I know you can see on camera, uh, vehicles are moving freely. Of course, the roads are, you know, unusually freer. If you are, if you are conversant with this part of, of the state, you know, it's a very busy uh, part of the state, but this morning the traffic is very light, and uh, but uh, there is no obstruction of any sort of vehicular movement here at this point in time. We just have um, security men around, and uh, maybe a couple of other journalists in anticipation of um, a possible repeat of what happened yesterday. But um, from the look of things, it doesn't appear like anything is going to happen here. Perhaps the protesters are still warming up. You know, maybe they are still regrouping somewhere to come here. But up to this moment, there is no sign of anything uh, impending, uh, anything like a protest happening here uh, today. All right. Um, I hear you say that um, perhaps the protesters are regrouping somewhere. Do you think that's the case or that after yesterday's protest, the people felt that their voices had been heard and so are going about their normal daily activities. Also, I don't know if you know what the situation with regards to public transportation is to aid movement of people and goods. Yes, I said that based on my experience with um, the Ojota protesters yesterday. We got to Ojota as early as 6, 7 yesterday and um, there was no sign of anything until we were told that they were grouping somewhere under the bridge in Ikeja. We had to go and meet them and follow that rally from Ikeja down to Ojota. If you had waited at Ojota yesterday, we wouldn't have seen or we would not have known that the protesters were grouping somewhere and they want to come in mass to Ojota, which of course has been designated the protest um, ground for them. So that is why I said it's possible that um, the protesters may also uh, be adopting that same uh, strategy here in Lekki. But as it is right now, 
there is no sign that anything is going to take place or anything is going to happen here at the Lekki uh, toll gate. Because by this time yesterday, uh, there were some, you know, a couple of protesters already arriving at this venue. But today, at this moment, nothing of sort is, is happening. You, so, you talked about them being dispersed yesterday with tear gas. Can you tell us more about that? Or did you hear about the situation with, as regards them being dispersed with tear gas yesterday? Yes, that, that was a report yesterday that um, a group of protesters came to, you know, they converged on the Lekki toll gate. And uh, because Lekki toll gate is not part of um, um, those places that has been designated, you know, that were designated by the court as the protest ground uh, for that demonstration, the security um, agent that were on ground yesterday had to disperse that small crowd of protesters. And, um, you know, remember what happened at this same uh, spot during the NSAS protest in 2020, you know, the, um, 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 the biggest violence, so to say, happened at the toll gate. And uh, maybe for fear of a repeat of that, the authorities have insisted that they were not going to allow any form of protest here at the Lekki toll gate. So when they came yesterday, the uh, policemen on duty here told them that this place had not been designated as one of the protest ground and as a result they had to you know send them away and when they refused they had to use tear gas to disperse the crowd yesterday well Robert, thank you very much we see that uh, it's a busy road behind you there uh looks like uh, people have just uh, decided to go about their normal businesses today thank you so we'll come back to the abuja studio where we still have uh, kingdom uh okere Good to come back to you. Are you? All right, Mr. Kerry, I, I thank you for giving us a, um, a report of your report from your perspective of what happened in Abuja with regards to the protest. I don't know if you've heard, um, you know, listened to the minister of the FCT speak. I don't know. How would you assess the handling? You know, I hear you talk about the police being unprofessional in their conduct and at some point harassing the people. Then um, I'd like you to speak on, touch on the um, impact of the minister of the FCT in terms of the handling of the situation. And then also your, an overview of what happened in other parts of the country. For instance, I'm sure you've seen the reports coming from Kano, where there, were, there was vandalization of property and by people there's currently a 24-hour curfew in place. What's your take on this? Well, uh, violent, uh, violent, uh, any form of violence that, that uh, leads to destruction of uh, public properties and private properties of your uh, fellow citizens you know, must be condemned. I don't see uh, uh, the, your right to freedom of expression to, 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 to lead to destruction of uh, 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 public and private properties. You can express your grievances within the ambience of the law, you know, lawfully, and uh, uh, the government hears you. And if, if the government that thinks well, uh, the uh, constructive criticisms helps government, you know, to, to, to retire their steps. So what happened, general overview, uh, uh, shows that it is the government themselves that in one way or the other be, uh, be, uh, uh, commences the, uh, the violence. And that they must have important talks to infiltrate the peaceful protesters and the, thereafter the thing resorted to violence. So whichever one uh, is condemnable, we encourage people to come out and pro protest peacefully and express their misgivings about the things that are going on in this country. And also expect the, the president of the country to be a listening president and to take some proactive steps to show that he is ready to address these issues. We, all the presidential candidates in the 2023 general election, identified subsidy as one thing that was going to be removed. And all of them identified it. And why they were all talking about removal of first subsidy is it's because of the corruption that amounts the subsidy regime. Because of the corruption. One year after, the man who presided over the corruption in payment of fuel subsidy, Meleke Ere is still the DMG of an NPC. Trump is still leaving him there. Probably, perhaps, because he's protecting the president's interest in the oil industry, either corrupt interest or otherwise. The person at the helm of affairs at the mainstream industry regulatory system is still there. These are the people that gave us false projections of daily consumption. False projections. Remember the former minister of uh, finance, Zelab, came out and told Nigerians how much about 18.397 18 
billion naira was paid as daily subsidy consumption. So what we are telling the president is restore the subsidy. Restore the subsidy and remove the corruption in subsidy. It is now obvious to all Nigerians that subsidy was the only social welfare program that all of us benefited, either directly or indirectly. Nobody knew until it was removed by President Bola Metrubu in his presidential address. So he should be a listening president. First of all, restore the subsidy, remove the corruption in subsidy. Begin first by removing the man who presided over the corruption in the petroleum industry. More than six years, this man was appointed in 2019. More than six years, and what the finances are not working. Be a listening president. Meleke area is not more than 200 million Nigerians that are protesting, that are dying of hunger because they mismanaged the subsidy regime that okay. made you okay. to remove the subsidy. Okay. Okay. Remove it, suspend him first, probe okay. the subsidy regime. Okay. Be a listening Mr. president. Mr. Mr. Other issues that we are asking Mr. for Mr. is security. Mr. Kerry, two things. Yes. Uh, yeah. The minister of the FCT, uh, which some weekend has said they want engagement. What should follow that? If they said they want engagement with the protesters. Secondly, he also talked about the fact that they have yes, identified sir. a senator that is sponsoring the protest. What's your take on that? Uh, like, uh, that's, I call it government propaganda. They are not very serious with the issue of engaging with the protesters. They are just using that to divert the, people ta the people's attention. Okay, if they say they are looking for the protesters, the protests commenced yesterday. At least between yesterday and today, you must have seen the protesters. You must have seen those promoting the protesters. You must have seen those that came out to address the crowd. You must have seen those that have spoken out in the protest. As early as 8 o'clock yesterday, I was at the police headquarters to tell them that they cannot intimidate all of us. I, I, I started my own protest from the first headquarters. It's not about putting one million police and army on the road to, to shut us from, from condemning corruption and criminality that is going on in this country. Who would resist that? So if they are very sincere with engaging with the protesters, in fact, from, from my own observation, we participating in this protest as lawyers in defense of, democra uh, in defense of democracy, there is no central coordination. Or, or, or that you can, can talk about to say uh, these are protesters. This is a social media awareness that was driven by hunger, suffering, hopelessness on the side of Nigerian youth. And we have identified various organizations that came together to promote it, and people gather and we are speaking out against this uh, illegality, this corruption that is going on in this government. So if you want to engage with the protesters, you have now seen the protesters, you have seen their, their leaders, you have seen those that address them. You, you are very sincere they should know how to reach some of us, you know, so that it's not about even reaching some of us. We are not in this business to compromise. The president should listen. Let him restore subsidy and remove the corruption in subsidy. First, we have all identified that subsidy truly was the only social welfare that we all benefited. We never knew until it was removed. Let him be a listening president. Remove subsidy okay. first. The issue Kingdom of insecurity okay. and why farmers cannot go to farm. Kingdom of okay. It's good you made yes. the point that uh, President Tinubu yes, was once uh, a protester himself. You never know. Some of those protesters yesterday may end up in the future as uh, president of uh, Nigeria too. You never know. History has a way of uh, playing its own games. But I want to ask you, all the governors that spoke yesterday, they said they will convey the concerns of the people that they have heard. They will convey the concerns to the government. Now, do you think it is too late now for President Tinubu to at least come out and address the people and say, well, you know, I've had your complaints, or you think it's, it's too late? It's not necessary anymore. As for the senator that... He it's not too late, sir. Okay. It's not too late. Okay. As for the senator that uh, Yesun Wiki was talking about, he said a certain senator, whom he did not name, was giving pure water and food to protesters, and that in his view, that amounts to sponsorship of a protest. Uh, do you see anything wrong in a senator or anybody uh, giving people food and uh, water to facilitate the protest? Well, I don't know where the senator gave out pure water and food to protesters. I was 
I, uh, uh, at the MQ Abiola Stadium throughout yesterday. And when we proceeded to Eagle Square, I was there throughout on the time they unleash Mayhem with their tear gas and uh, uh, we have to keep safe and return back, you know, to make sure that uh, the protesters go home peacefully to return today. So the issue of uh, 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 Senator coming to sponsor, he's telling pure lies. I was there more than seven hours from MQ Abiola Stadium to up to Eagle Square. I was there until each and every one of the protesters protesters left. I was in my car. After they have uh, unleashed their gas, I parked in a place, I relaxed and watching how uh, uh, the protesters went home peacefully. No senator, no agent of a senator came there to give us pure water or sweet or nothing. Nothing like that. The protesters are not induced. Nobody is inducing anybody. The sponsor of this protest is hunger, poverty, corruption. We care that he's talking about a senator giving pure water. Should be ashamed of himself. We can came became a minister, and his priority was to build billions of Naira World residents for vice president. Where did I took Abu Bakr live as president of Nigeria? Where did Kudu Okejelata live as president of Nigeria because, before he became president? Where did Lamabu Sambo live? Where did Oshimajo live for eight years? We came, came, and this administration that is corrupt reading came, and his priority was to build West Public Fund to build resident for, 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 for the vice president. When the people cannot see food to eat, he's talking about pure water. They don't know Know what to do and they don't want to do the right thing. It's either they have vowed not to do the right thing or they don't have anything in their in their, in their head to do the right thing for All the people. Right. Should, he, he should be talking about pure water. When he is he he, he has shown that they don't know where to place priority. Right. You remove subsidy. Mr. They are Kerry. giving more money, more allocation, more allocation to governors. All right. Mr. Yes. Okere, we have to go now, but I want you in 30 seconds to speak about the yes, pro-government protesters. Yesterday, we saw some buses convey them, will convey them. Were there any issues or fracas between them and the, um, you know, the peaceful protesters um, for end, end bad governance? Very quickly, 30 yes, seconds. Yes, like, 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 Less like in my introduction, I told you that when the CP or FCT CP gave us the electronic, uh, served us the electronic copy of the court order, we confided the activity at the MQR Abiola Stadium and we were peaceful, addressing the press peacefully until we saw buses of talks uh, sponsored by uh, the government of uh, President Bola Ahmed. You know, How do you know and that was when what's the, the evidence? protesters. What's, what's so the evidence that, was, that they were sponsored by the government? They, they came, they were protected by the police. They were protected by, in fact, they were even escorted by the police in convoy of more than 12 uh, 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 higher uh, buses, coastal buses. Uh, they, they came, they parked a little bit afar from the district, and they were given, they collected their money first before they come out to protest. Some of them, after collecting the money, joined the protest, and we are singing alongside right. with us, hunger day, hunger day. Right. So it's not okay. about going to higher talks to come and protest against their fellow citizens. Okay. It's about doing the right thing. Let the president be a little. He should stop listening to some of this is aid that right. I'm misleading him. Let him do the right thing. Remove the corruption in subsidy and return subsidy first. All right. All Remove right. the corruption in subsidy. First of all, sack the man who presided over corruption in subsidy. Right. Reform subsidy Thank and you. return it. All right. Well, that is the way well, to start. We've heard you this morning, uh, Mr. Kingdom Okiri, Barrister Kingdom Okiri. Thank you for your time and stay safe out there. And um, for your right Thank to you protest so is also a peaceful protest. Thank you.